Hello, Carl here, the Have A Go Homesteader. And today we're gonna to be making a smoker out of these old pallets. Something everyone can do and uh, every homesteader can have a go at this. That's the point of these videos. So we're gonna make a smoker for both smoking for flavor and also preserving meat. And we're gonna do it using these old pallets. I'm gonna show you how. And the first thing I need to do is break these pallets apart and denail them. So that's what I'm gonna get on with now. Right, so that's the first pallet done. And now I just wanna show you a few tips because there's easy ways and hard ways to do this. They're really put together well. So I'm just gonna show you a few tips that's gonna make it a lot easier for you. So each slat is nailed with two nails here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do, you're gonna to wanna to get your bar like this. If you can, a bar just like this is perfect. And you're gonna to wanna to put it there and you're gonna to wanna to line this notch up so it goes either side of the nail and then drive that in. And then what you want to do is make sure that you've driven it so that the edge of the bar is past that first nail so that when you come to lift it you're lifting it in between the nails because if you just come on the side and try and lift it you can start pulling the timber away and pulling it apart so if you get between the two nails that's that i'm not going to say that's never going to happen but it's going to happen a lot less frequently so that's how you want to get your bar in first of all so let's just lever this this up you see that comes up nice and easy and then here we're going to do the same just, and the first one will be the hardest. As soon as that first one's up, you've got a little bit of a gap here. To get the second one under, that's gonna come up nice and easy. And then onto your third one. But then what you're gonna to want to do as you work, as you come along, is take off any nails as you go. Now, what I did, I stripped all of the tops off, put them to one side, then I denailed them all. But any nails that hung around in the, uh, in the rest of the pallet, I took them off as I went just because it's quite easy to forget they're there. And they want to go straight in your pocket or somewhere safe because otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to find that they work their way into children's feet or tractor tires or my goat's feet. It's really important to make sure that you get all of those nails accounted for. And then once you've stripped all of your timbers off, I come along and we just lay them with the nail sticking up. And when you do this, you're going to find it a lot easier if you have your nail quite close to where the timber's being supported. If you have it over here and you try and knock them through, the timber's gonna bounce. Whereas if you have it right close to that piece of wood, it's not. And then just tap them through. This one only had two left in it, but come along the whole length, tap them all through, turn them over, take them all out, and again, put them somewhere safe. So that's all there is to it for the actual stripping of the pallets. I've got three more to do here, and uh, they're probably gonna take me I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So I'm gonna get that done and I'll speak to you when I've got all of my timber ready to go for construction. Right, we're all done and I've separated the different pallets into different piles because they were slightly different sizes. And the only tools I've used so far are this bar and a claw hammer. Next up, I'm gonna be using a saw and a drill. Now, you can use a hand saw, of course you can. There's hardly any sawing to do, but I'm gonna be using a circular saw because I have access to one. It's just that little bit quicker and easier. But like I say, if you don't, just use a hand saw, no problem. So we're basically gonna use all of the, the flat bits of the pallet wood for our walls. And then we're gonna use the thicker bits that run through the middle of the pallet as legs and corner pieces. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna put a little bit of it together and then I'll talk you through the process. Okay, so you want to start by taking some of the chunky pieces that run through the middle of your pallet and cutting four of them to roughly half the size of your long lengths that you're going to use for walls, the thin bits. Now, the reason being, we're going to take another piece, a full one, and extend that out. And that is going to be the height that our smoker stands off the ground. So whatever size you cut this, is how high it's gonna stand off the ground. I need to leave a little bit of space underneath to make room for our actual fire. So I'm gonna put a few of these corners together now. These are gonna form the four corners of our smoker. So I'll put a few of these together now, and then we'll, we'll take another look.
there you go there's our four legs and as you can see we've done we've done two that go that way where i've put the legs on that side of the timber and two the opposite side so that when we get all four of them they'll make our four corners so i'm going to lay our back side on the floor and we're going to lay our slats down in between so that I can work out how far apart we want them to be. And then we're gonna cut a cross piece for the top and the bottom. It'll all make sense as I do it. So that's gonna form the back of our smoker as you look at it when it's stood up. So what I need to do now is measure the distance between here and here and cut two more of these thick pieces of timber and we'll screw one there and one there, then we can screw all these to that. So there you go, there's the back of our smoker. And we've got our two front legs built. Now when it comes to size, it's all down to what you want to do with it. I need mine to be big enough to hold a whole leg of a pig or something of that nature, maybe a leg of venison. I don't need it really to be able to hold anything bigger than that. The only things I'm gonna be smoking are gonna be those huge leg joints of our pork or maybe some fish, things like that. I'm not gonna be smoking whole, whole big animals. So this is gonna be plenty big enough for us. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two more pieces of this thicker timber to come along here. And what that's gonna do is it's going to hold the structure upright, make it easier for us to work on from here on in. And it's also going to form the basis for our bottom, the bottom of our smoker. because so we're gonna need a floor on here. So that's what that's going to do. So I'm gonna get those on and then, uh, then it will stand up for us and uh, we can start finishing it off. Okay, so I'll just show you around it and you can see what we've got going on here. So uh, this is the back, this will be the door, and we've got two sides. So I've cut these pieces of wood at the right length so that we're gonna fit four upright slots across here. So we don't need to do any more cutting than we have to. So the next thing I'm gonna do is cut two more of these for the top, and then we'll put our uprights in. Then we're going to do the floor, the roof, then the door. Now, when it comes to the roof, all I'm going to do for now is just put some timber across the top and that's going to give us a functioning roof that we can use to smoke with. Now, it's not going to keep rain out, so that's definitely something we're going to need to consider, but I can add any type of waterproof covering at a later date. I'm not too worried about that today. I want to get the construction built and uh, what I'll probably do is I'll just use some breathable roofing felt, which I've got rolls of lying around, and we'll just lap that over the top at some point and tack that on. So that's simple enough. And when it comes to the floor, you can see we've got this lovely shelf all the way around so we can just run our timbers across that way. It's gonna be really simple. So it's just the door to do now, and then we'll talk about how it functions as a smoker. Because at the moment you might be thinking, are you building a smoker or are you just building a wooden box? And I'd understand why you might think that. I'll get into that shortly. Because we've not quite finished, even when the door's on. So I've just used a couple of hinges that I had lying around to hang the door. As you can see, the door is really, really simple. There's absolutely no messing about here. It's just some off cuts to brace it. Always put a diagonal brace going from the bottom hinge outwards. That's going to stop your door sagging over time and this end sort of dropping. And then a couple of hinges. Last thing I'm going to do, and I'm, again, I'm using stuff that I've just found lying around. So I'm going to put this, which is just a an eye with a, with a thread on the end. 
and I literally just found it like this. I guess it was used to hang a picture, uh, but it was in our shed. So I'm gonna put this in here. The only thing I've bought to make this is a few screws. Now I bought these in B&Q. If you live in England, you'll know B&Q. And these cost me, I think less than two pound, maybe at the very most, sort of two pound 50, something like that. Um, and as you can see, I've not even used them all. This is going to make our sort of catch, if you like. And it doesn't have to be brilliant, you know? This isn't something I'm gonna leave out in the woods smoking for days on end. You know, we'll, we'll be smoking just outside the kitchen. We'll be checking on it regularly when we're using it. I just don't need it to be, you know, really, really beautiful looking or finished with lovely hinges and handles and stuff. That's not what it's for. I'm building this very much for function, not form. Now I'm just gonna pop a screw around the corner there. And that's our catch. So there you have it, one smoke box made from pallet wood. Like I said, I've not paid for anything here apart from a handful of screws. So the idea of this and how we will use it, I will put um, a bit of batten across the top here, most likely that I can hang things from. So we can hang a leg of pork in here or some fish or whatever. I will probably also put a little rack at the bottom in case I want to put things on there, or I might just use, you know, something out of an old oven, you know, an old wire mesh rack can just sit in the bottom to hold things off the bottom. You want airflow around your meat while you're smoking it. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll just cut a hole in the bottom here. Um, I can't do that now because, well, let me explain what it's gonna do first. So I'm gonna use an old barbecue. You can find them in skips being thrown out on free cycle all the time. A really old, small uh, clamshell barbecue where the top just comes down and it just holds coals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place that under here and then we'll cut a circle in the top of that we'll cut a circle in here and we'll basically put a pipe between the two a bit of metal ducting now the reason i can't cut that hole is because i'm going to just come across some i haven't even started looking for that yet but i'm going to get some metal pipe which is going to feed from the from the barbecue up into the smoker so we get our coals going down there put the pipe going up into our smoker put our meat in there and uh, away we go so there you have it, one rustic smoker made out of pallet wood. And uh, if you've liked this video, please do make sure you press that thumbs up. It makes a big difference to help me grow this channel. Uh, please subscribe to my channel as well if you're not already. We've got lots and lots more videos coming in this Have A Go Homesteader series. I'm gonna be doing some leather work. I'm gonna be making a sheath for my knife out of leather. We're going to be making pasta. We're going to be making a water filter from scratch. We're gonna show you how to make sourdough from scratch yourself, sourdough starter that is, and loads and loads of other things all coming up in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching guys, I really, really appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, come and check us out elsewhere. We also have a podcast, the Self-Sufficient Hub podcast, and consider becoming a patron, patreon.com forward slash self-sufficient hub. Thanks for watching, speak to you soon, cheers.